What is up, Squared Nation? Welcome back to No Counters, No Combos. And as you can see, we've got a Miraculous Revival box that we're going to open for you on camera today. Shout out to my amazing sponsor, Computer and Gaming Universe, uh, for getting these bad boys in so we can showcase them to the world. I'm just having trouble with this plastic like I always do. But we're going to get right into this box opening here. And as you can see, we have a new um, promotion here with Set 5, the Box Topper. It's the uh, Black Mass Saiyan. Uh, it's a pretty decent card. Uh, I'm not really too fond of this one as opposed to the other ones in the set, like the SR and the One Drop. But, you know, it's not too bad. I'm sure it's going to have its niche somewhere in the meta, but the artwork is really dope. So let's get right into these packs here. We're going to put our Mass Saiyan to the side. We're going to dump these out. And we always start with the left side here at no counters, no combos, because I'm left-handed biased. So I always start with the left side of the box. So we're going to rifle through these packs. Um, we're looking for, obviously, foils. We're looking for some staple commons and uncommons and stuff. Set 5 is going to be a pretty good set. So we have Baba. Um, it's our first card here. We're going to open the packs to make sure I have it in the center of the frame for you. We have Oolong's Wish, Janemba, Hellfighter 17, we have the Desire for King Piccolo, Super Saiyan Goku, Yamcha, Super Combo, Android 17, Super Combo Trunks, the Rare Ape uh, Goku. And then we have our first SR pull, the Mighty Dragon himself, the Eternal Shenron. The artwork on this card is ridiculous. They did a really good job with the Shatter Foils. I really like the new take on the artwork here with Set 5. And we're just going to keep going. And at the end of the video, we'll do like a recap on, you know, what was pulled as far as like SRs and rare, uh, not rares, but like SRs, SPR, stuff like that. Now, they did up the ratios for set five. So we'll get into that in a second here. I'm just going to kind of rifle through these cards. You know, if you need me to go over anything in particular, just leave a comment down below. And, you know, we'll definitely open this up for discussion as far as what cards have what effects and what cards are probably going to see a lot of play in set five. But for the most part, I'm just kind of going to go through these cards. You know, Bandai does a good job of revealing what cards are going to be available in the set prior to the set being purchased. So it's not much of a surprise when you get the boxes and you start opening the packs, except for having like the physical representation of the card in your hand. But at least, you know, you're aware of what the effects are before you go ahead and commit to making that purchase. So I found it kind of redundant in going over the effects uh, of every single card and like dragging these videos out when really the whole purpose of these box videos is just to show pull ratios and see how often certain cards are pulled, what's a short print, you know, how many SRs are you getting, how many SPRs are you getting. That's the meat and the potatoes when it comes to a box opening video. At least that's what my opinion is on it. If you guys don't agree, if you want me to do these a certain way and you want me to focus more individually on card per card, then I can definitely do that. But I just wanted to get this out there so you guys can see, you know, what type of ratios you can expect from these boxes so that when you, ooh, boom, Gogeta SR, this card is vicious. You play this card, your opponent shuffles their whole hand back into the deck and they draw three. It's like a... It's like the opposite of Cell Chain. You know, it's so vicious. And being able to just um, Union Fusion it with the new Gogeta support is actually pretty savage. It's a good finisher. Um, but like I was saying before, um, you know, I wanted to do this as early as possible because I know there's some people on the fence about buying boxes. Now, my personal philosophy on it is I think if you're investing into the game and you play this game you know, and you're and you as a player want to grow with the releases of the game and you know the continuing support of the game. Um, I really think, oh, and then we got the SR Janemba. This card is gorgeous. I mean, the artwork and the gold foiling in the upper left corner just pops. Like, like I'm saying, like the artwork in Dragon Ball Super is so good. There's just so many beautiful cards. I mean, minus the secret rare. I really don't like how the secret rare looks. Hopefully, you know, I mean, obviously I want to pull one, but I just don't really like the artwork for the Secret Rare. But everything else looks really good. Even the commons. My favorite my favorite artwork in the game is when you get an uncommon or common foil. I think the foiling on... Ooh, and then we got the SR-17. Card's not too bad. I still think the, the Android 17 leader has to find its stride before it makes noise in the meta. But it's 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 off to a good start. 
But like I was saying before, like I really like the the uncommon common foils. I really like how those cards look. They just the foiling on them just pops. So those are my favorites. Like I really get excited for those. Um, but as far as openings and product product opening goes, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's my least favorite thing to do because you know I don't really have like a ironed out way of doing it but i know it's necessary and you know as part of a member of the community like i know it's important to show how easy or difficult it is to get certain cars because that's what's that's what keeps people on the fence about it you know like that's what separates somebody from buying just a couple boxes to maybe buying a case like me you know i always get cases me and my teammate enrique Ooh, we got the SR Frieza there too. That card's beautiful. Just the, the purple and the yellow always look so good with Frieza. Me and my teammate Enrique always split the cases. So we always have everything that we need because obviously, you know, I like playing different decks and I like, I don't like to want things and not have them. So like if I ever need to say, her, oh, hey, I need that, you know, random, you know, whatever South Kai card. Or that random vanilla Goku card. We got the SR um, Black Mass Saiyan here. That's the one I'm talking about. That's that's the one that um, if if its attack isn't successful, it does damage anyway. It's really, really vicious. I, I like it a lot. Especially the artwork is so dope. But I like having pretty much every card and multiples of every card. Because I never want to like search for something. I want to know where it is at all times. So like if I need to build a certain deck, I have all the pieces. So as far as like an investment, I think the best way to go is the case because you get your 12 boxes you're guaranteeing specific ratios of certain cards and you also get the dash packs you know you get two dash packs per box so per, per case you're getting 24 dash packs that is essentially a play set of every single dash foil plus two extra cards so you pretty much never have to want or need for anything because you'll have everything available to you i know it's it's a decent amount of coin we have the SR Gotenks here. This card is so good. I love the flavor, you know, especially after seeing the Fusion Reborn movie, you know, Gotenks fighting off all those Hitler minions. Like, I get why they threw the 100, 100, um, the 100 battle cards in there. It was really, really cool. I like the way that they did that. Um, but like I was saying before, like, if you're going to invest, I think the best investment to make is the case because you're going to have everything that you need. Now, it, it could be a little expensive, but always try to split it with a teammate or somebody so it's not too bad on you um because it's worth it in the end you know oh there it is spr yamsha that is gorgeous i love the sprs i love the take on him with the black and gold background and the outline it just looks so good if anything bandai never drops the ball on the artwork like the artwork to me is always so good and there's a lot of beautiful sprs um in this set um and to piggyback on the sprs with the new ratios you know basically with set five we have the introduction of every single sr having an spr alternative variant so there's 11 srs there's 11 sprs in the set total um which kind of makes the ratios a little wonky but from what i'm seeing so far it's not too too bad you do get one spr per box so if you're getting a case, you're getting 11 or 12 SPRs, you're getting the secret rare, and you're getting pretty much like two play sets of every SR. So it's enough for you and your teammates to split or your, your one teammate to split. I would definitely make that recommendation if there's anything I do in this game. If there's any type of contribution I make in this game, if you're worried about getting everything, the best way to do it is to find somebody like a teammate or a friend who plays the game as much as you do and just split cases. You know, it can range you anywhere from like, like 350 bucks to anywhere between 350 and like four, not 450, but anywhere between like 350 and like 375, I would say is what it would cost you for like a half case to split. I mean, Dragon Ball has a really bad secondary market. We all know that. So it's not something you're going to make your return on. You're not going to really make any type of profit. You might make a couple bucks here and there. There's really no shot of you going even. 
But if you're not in it for the money, which a lot of people aren't, like myself, I'm not really in it for the financial gain. I'm in it just because I love the game and I love playing it. It's not a bad idea to get cases. And it allows me to do content like this for you guys and box openings and, you know, helping people out with just cards or bulk that I might have extra. Like people in my Discord, shout out to you. You know, they ask for cards. They might need stuff. I might have extras. Like I have no problem helping people out you know, as much as I possibly can, because ultimately the more you expand the player base, the bigger the game is going to get and the longevity is going to get better. So that's what I want for this game. Um, you know, I want it to last as long as it possibly can. We got that foil Yamcha leader. That looks friggin' sexy. Like I said, man, uncommon foil is my favorite, um, type of foiling for, for Dragon Ball. But, you know, the only way to increase the game and increase the longevity is just to keep, you know, increasing the player base. So if I have, you know, thousands of cards in bulk extra and I'm doing nothing with them, they're sitting in in short boxes just collecting dust and somebody needs those cards, I would be more than happy to just send them to you, you know, because who am, who well, I would be doing a huge disservice to the community if I didn't share what I had you know, to those who don't have it as available to them, you know, uh, not everybody has a sponsorship, not everybody has a really good, you know, working relationship with their partner. My partner just happens to be a, a, a local hobby shop. So, you know, I kind of am, I'm in a pretty good situation, but not everybody has that, you know, not everybody has, you know, locals that they go to every week, you know, it, it's still a new game. So we're still trying to increase the numbers and increase the outreach. So, if, if I have to send somebody, you know, in a different state, a couple cards here and there so they can complete their deck and start playing, I have no problem doing that. So with that being said, guys, if you guys are looking for any types of cards or if you're in my Discord or anything, just hit me up, you know, leave a comment down below, email me, send me a message in Discord, you know, we'll talk about it, you know, we'll see what you need and, you know, we'll get it to you as best as we possibly can here. That's what we want. We want to grow. We want everybody to grow together. And we definitely want this game to last because, you know, we want it to be, I, I, me personally, I want it to be in the big three, you know, I'm tired of, I'm tired of the same big three. I'm tired of magic Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh. Like I really want Dragon Ball to be in the big three and maybe take Yu-Gi-Oh out, which will probably never happen, but I don't know. That's just me being biased, a former Yu-Gi-Oh player, but, um, so far so good. I mean, we, you know, this case has been pretty, this box has been pretty good so far. Uh, we've gotten a couple SRs. We got our SPR, so we're just kind of winding it down, you know, finishing up these packs. And set fives get a really good diversity, and you know, it's 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 a healthy set. And I don't really think, or I don't really see anything in this set being too overpowered. Um, yeah, there are some really strong decks like Shenron's going to be really good. You know, Janemba is going to be really good, but there's a lot of hard checks and counters to those to those um, decks. I mean. Janemba loses to decks that play fair. Like Janemba punishes unfair play. That's what makes it so good. But it definitely loses to fair game. Like I think Janemba really suffers, you know, against aggro critical strategies. I think the wish leaders also suffer to aggro strategies because they can't turn out their Dragon Balls as fast as possible. And then by that time they're like three or four life. And it's like, oh, I can't really search for anything and put myself down to a low life total. Because you still have to protect. But um I think the game's going to be in a healthy state. I'm really glad Bandai decided to permaban SS3. I think it would have been a huge crime bringing him back because it's not needed. And I'm just really excited to see the creativity that's coming with Set 5. And I'm really curious to see what everybody's going to be building and you know what everybody's going to be sharing as far as deck ideas and strategies and how people are going to play around meta and what's going to be considered meta. I mean, there's always going to be a triangle at the top in tier one, and then there's going to be that mid tier that just kind of everything else floats into. But I'm excited. You know, I haven't really been this excited for a set. You know, I mean, I was really excited for for um, for set three when it dropped. And where is it? We're it's our last pack. <laughs> All this talking I've been doing, and I haven't realized this is the last pack we're going to be opening here. So let's hope we pull the nuts. Um, but yeah, I was really excited for set five because I thought. You know, it was taking the game in a really good direction. So um, I'm just really happy for where it's at. I'm happy to be back making content for you guys. I know it's been a while, uh, but I'm really happy that I'm able to do this. Um, 
and I'm just I'm glad you guys enjoy you know what I put out. So that was our last pack. Uh, we didn't finish off too strong, you know, just with the rare. But let's do a quick recap and see what we were able to pull from this box. So we got the SR Go Tanks, we got the SR Black Mass Saiyan, the SR Frieza, we got the SR Android Super Android 17, SR Janemba, which is gorgeous again, like I said before, SR Gogeta. We got the SR Shenron here, which is just, oh, it's just, I can't explain it. It's just, it looks so good. And then, of course, we got the SPR Yamcha, the human god himself, the lone wolf. Do not sleep on Yamcha. It's going to be a really good deck. Thank you guys so much for watching. Shout out to my sponsor, Computer and Gaming Universe. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. We will see you guys in the next video. Be there or be squared.